All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about a really cool 22. This is not one you see every day. This is a Voer model 2005. It is an open bolt semi-auto from the 80s. Let's check it out. Nice old German 22. Let's have a little fun. <laughs> that's cool so see open bolt uh, you know it, it is a semi-auto but basically the primary difference on this particular uh, rifle is that the round is fired as the bolt slams home essentially the face of the bolt has a little raised edge it essentially serves as a firing pin and when the uh, the bolt slams home the cartridge fires um, a very uh, interesting type of gun uh, these types of rifles are not really one that's commonly available anymore uh, Fleming made a bunch of these uh, back in the early 80s. They weren't really successful because they're not terribly robust guns. They don't hold up particularly well. Um, this is just really more of kind of an interesting footnote. Uh, this Voer is a very high quality uh, rifle. It does have tangent sights, kind of like a little miniature Mauser, which was one thing that kind of drove me to it. And despite being a, uh, a slam fire type of gun, it actually still was pretty accurate. As we can see there, we're getting some pretty acceptable accuracy. A um, couple of different magazine options, but most of the mags are 15 uh, rounds, which was another reason that, uh, you know, back in the 80s when they were uh, making a bunch of these, converting these and everything, they weren't uh, very successful because most people wanted like the American 180s and things with like, you know, the big drum magazines and things like that. So uh, this is one that just wasn't really successful for that reason. Uh, there's a few of them on the registry. They are out there. Uh, they're very, very expensive, and they're very hard to get. Um, there are some of the original semi-autos floating around out there like this one. This is just a semi-auto open bolt Voer, model 2005. Um, and without boring you guys with any kind of details, basically, with, uh, with the open bolt semis, you know that they did away with those a long time ago. Uh, the ATF ended up determining that they weren't okay with uh, an open bolt semi being out there. Uh, there are a bunch of like the old school uh, M10s that are still out there uh, that are open bolt semis. There's not a lot of open bolt semis out there. Uh, the list is very short. But the main reason we wanted to show this gun off is because it's just kind of an interesting uh, footnote in firearms development. And uh, it just represents kind of a cool classic 22. Um, that uh, it's just interesting. It's different. You know, if, if you've already got a whole bunch of random semi-auto 22s, if you've got a bunch of random uh, bolt actions and single shots and pump actions and things like that, and an open bolt semi is something that you don't see every day, and this is just always an eye catcher at the range. So the safety is basically just pull the bolt back, lock it up to up into the rear, all right? And then once it is uh, taken out of the safety notch, the sear and the trigger holds the bolt back. And when you squeeze the trigger, Bolt slams home, fires the cartridge. Blows it out automatically, it's just a blowback, and then the bolt is locked to the rear by the sear. Pretty cool. Pretty accurate too. All right, let's take out a few sodas for fun. On the last shot, the bolt just slams home shuts on an empty chamber okay so there is no last round bolt hold open because the bolt is not held open <laughs> well, on the last shot you squeeze the trigger and the bolt slams home pretty cool all right i'm going to load another magazine here we just kind of wanted to show this little gun off i mean this isn't really meant to be anything fancy in terms of a review not really a review uh, this is just one of those odd quirky you know 80s guns that you know, it's just an interesting footnote. Uh, they are out there. They are kind of available. They're very, very, very expensive. And eh, availability on them can be kind of spotty. And then also the magazines are extremely expensive for this gun. Um, I was sourcing at one point some additional magazines for this. And the magazines alone are like 100 bucks a piece. So it's not really a gun that is real practical for a lot of people unless you're a collector or something like that or in case you just happen to you know, come on to something like this for a reasonable price, um, they kind of fit that niche quite well. 
So right now we've got the rear tangent down to about 25 meters. We're gonna take some shots out to 100, or actually it's about 75. Let's just dial this up to 75 and see how true the, uh, the, the adjustments track out to a little bit longer range. And that was one thing that really um, sort of driv drove me to this gun is I really like the Mauser style tangent sights and it's German, you know, it's kind of quirky, it's weird. You know, it's got some just really basic basket weave checkering on the stock, which is kind of cool. It's got the Monte Carlo cheek piece. I mean, it's, it's just an interesting little 22, and that was one thing that kind of drove me to it. All right, and it's just neat. Let's face it, it's just cool. All right. Not bad. I'm gonna bring the sights back down. Let's take out our gopher right here, right up close. Guys, I don't know how more accurate she needs to be. I mean, on that gopher right there, it stacked all those rounds on about the size of a silver dollar, and I wasn't really trying. So, you know, that's another common misconception that people have about open bolt semi-autos. They say, oh, well, they're not accurate. Okay. Well, they can be pretty accurate. Uh, but you have to think there is a lot going on. Uh, once that bolt reaches the apex of its travel, and... Uh, and once it, you know, basically closes and continues to fire the shot, the relationship in terms of the back of the cartridge and the chamber and the lockup of the gun, once it's reached that point, you know, can be relatively inconsistent. You know, that can have to do with like the strength of various primers. It could have to do with like the thickness of the, uh, of the, the rim on the cartridge. A lot of things can affect that, but despite those shortcomings, it's still a reasonably accurate little rifle, you know? Seems to be really well made. Um, but one thing I will say is back in the 80s, these Vowers, they really weren't high-end expensive guns. You know, the Vower company, they did offer some uh, other various 22s that were maybe a little bit higher end, but this was actually intended to be kind of a relatively inexpensive export model. Wasn't intended to be an overly fancy or expensive uh, rifle. It was just meant to be just a, a just real basic little game-getting gun or just, you know, a little fun plinker. That was kind of what they were intended to be. But it's really cool. One thing I'll mention about these Vowers real quick, I, I wanted to, to make sure I, I mentioned in this video. Um, if you get one of these rifles or if you own one, check that rear section on the receiver. There's a, a threaded cap that holds a bolt in. Check that from time to time, okay? Because you, you really got to be careful about that. It can come loose and you don't want that thing to get loose on you because that action can work back and crack your stock. So just keep that in mind. That's something you want to watch out for. All right, so one more mag. We're just having a little fun here. Very accurate, very fun little shooter. Guys, that is so cool. Can't ask for anything more than that. I just wanted this to be a quick, fun video. This is just kind of one of the uh, old guns from the collection. Just thought we'd bring it out and show you guys an interesting little part of uh, firearms development. Uh, it's not something you see every day. Really cool little 22. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate all of our viewers. If you support us on Patreon, Man Cans, or if you buy shirts over on Forge from Freedom, thank you guys for the support. Uh, you're the reason that we can keep making these videos. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Maybe you learned something. We'll see you next time.